it's great to be here, and I thank you for asking me to share the word. Praise God. Because I love sharing the word of God. Amen. The message this morning is going to be pretty simple. John 316. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Before I do this, there's a song I want to sing. And I think you all should join in with us. It. It's very easy to learn. It's called Celebrate. That's what we're here to do. We're here to celebrate. Let's, let's do it. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate. He is risen. He is risen. be praising him every day every day every moment that we we possibly can John 3 16 everybody knows this group knows this it says uh, for God so loved the world love Romans 8 30 uh, 35 if you read all of that you'll see that nothing can separate you from the love of God nothing Nothing you do, nothing anybody else does for, to you can separate you from the love of God. And you need to get that down into your spirit that God loves you. That's the gospel, that God loves you and God sent his only son to die for you while we, while we were yet sinners. He died for us. That's right. And we have to get that down. The problem is that most people don't realize who they are in Christ Jesus. Oh boy, we're powerful people. If we and especially if we can get unified, if we come to if the church ever comes together as a Amen. unit and we're believing one thing, we're a powerful unit. Yes. Praise God. There ain't nothing to be able to yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on in him should have, should not perish, but have everlasting life. The word I want to share this morning is the thing that we most, most of the time we forget. God gave, gave. And if you would recognize it, he's continually giving every one of us every day. Yeah. He's continually giving. In uh, First Peter, or Second Peter, uh, verse three, it says, "According to to His divine power, has given unto us all things pertaining to life, all things, not just some things, everything that we have need of, He has given us pertaining to life, and we seem to forget that that He's." God has given us all things pertaining to life. Our biggest problem is this. Yeah. And our thinking. You know, he told us to renew your mind. What are you supposed to renew your mind with? You're supposed to renew your mind with the word of God. Amen. Because when trouble comes, you need to speak the word of God because that's what's going to get you the trouble. You know, Moses, when he was leading the children of Israel out of, out of Egypt, he came to the Red Sea. And he started praying and talking to the Lord. And the Lord says, why, why come to me? I've given, I've given you everything you need. And he had. He had everything that he needed. All he had to do uh, is lift up the rod. And, uh, and the word of the Lord said, stand. And see the salvation of the Lord. Stand fast and see the salvation of the Lord. 
The problem is we, we get into a, pro, uh, into a problem and we want, we're trying all everything to, to work this problem out. And God says, stand and see the salvation of God. Stand and see God work in his marvelous way to, to bring us out of that situation. If he doesn't to bring us out of it, he's going to be right on our side, taking us through it so that, the, so that we're going to come through and we're going to be stronger on the other side of the temptation than we were before we entered into it. That's right. Amen. Count it all joy. That's what James says. Count it all joy when Amen. you enter into diverse temptation. Mm -hmm. For the temptation work is patience. And let patience have its perfect work. That's what we need to do. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, <laughs> I'm 80 years old. <laughs> I'm 80 years old. And God has taken the greatest thing that I ever did in my life was when I received Jesus Christ. Yeah, that was the, the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And oh, he yeah. said that he would bless me and take care of me. When I was in this, I was in this service one night, and uh, this minister, Brother uh, Ellathorpe, by the way, he, he preached, walked outside, and died of a heart attack. But anyway, Brother Ellathorpe, this, this church is pretty big, there are about 600 people there, and Brother Ellathorpe said, I have a very special message from the Lord for some, for some of you people. And so after he preached, we all came up to the altar, we mingled around, we come, uh, fellowship, and uh, finally people started leaving. And pretty soon it got down to where there was only about 20 or 30 of us. And Brother Alathor said, now I'm gonna tell you what the Lord had told me to tell you people. He says, Ephesians 3.20 Ephesians 3.20 for, for uh, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can think of that according to the power that works in you the power that works in you Yet the gift is yours but it has to be your power what's your power? your power is faith Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because without faith, you can't please God. And you need to, you need to understand it. Most people don't understand that it, you have to have faith. Okay, now we're going to get into the, the real part of this. The promises of God, or the gifts of God. Uh, Isaiah 56, 4. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my uh, my uh, Sabbath and those the things that please me and take hold of uh, my ordinances. He's gonna get, he's gonna do something special for for those people. Isaiah fifty uh, fifty six five. Even unto them will uh, will I give in my house. And within my walls, a place. I'm having a hard time seeing it. <laughs> a monument and a name. Better than sons and daughters, I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Do you hear that? He's going to give you an everlasting name <coughs> that's not going to be cut off. He's talking to the children of Israel that he's going to bring them into the land. And, and he's going to give them an everlasting name that they shall not be cut off. And you look at the Jewish nations for thousands of years. People have been trying to destroy that nation yeah. and wipe them off the face of the earth. Oh, but yeah. God has kept his promise. And he's given them an everlasting name yeah. that shall not be taken away. Yeah. There's no way it's going to be taken away. Mm -hmm. And we have, to re we have to do our part. What is our part? To pray for the... Uh, Jerusalem and pray for the Jewish people yeah. that they would be safe yeah. and they're uh, like you heard the other night they, there's real problem over there yeah. praise God yeah. Jeremiah 24 7 
And I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their, their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. He's going to give you a new heart. When you got saved, he gave you a new heart. He gave you a heart of flesh instead of a heart of stone. He took that, he, and he, prom he made promises that he was going to give us a new heart. Praise God. I thank God for that new heart. I praise God that he took away my stony heart because I, I did. I carry a grudge. <laughs> I fight at a drop of a coin. It didn't take much. <laughs> and I had a mouth that was really wicked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really did. No. Oh, yeah. We're all guilty. Yeah, that's for sure. No. Oh, yeah. I used to pull cars over, pull people out of their car for cutting me off, oh. Oh, no. whatever. I stopped in one one morning. I was on the 101 freeway, and I'm uh, just about into uh, downtown Los Angeles. And I started to pass this guy, and this guy pulled over, wouldn't leave me pass. So, when I did get the chance to pass, I passed, and I stopped my motorcycle right in the center of the freeway, <laughs> put it on, kicked down the kickstand, and went back there and told the guy off. Oh, wow. wow. I mean, I was, I was a case. Uh -oh. Was that last week? Uh -oh. <laughs> He's going to give you a spiritual rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Give unto me all of thine, lab all thine that labor, and have a heavy laden, and I will give them rest. Yeah. How do we get that rest? By have believing His word. When we believe His word, we rest in the, in the uh, assurance that everything is going to be all right. God's going to take care of it. And we can rest, and we don't have to have a lot of anxiety. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I've seen so many people healed and delivered mm -hmm. from all manner of, of sickness because they believed that when somebody laid hands on them, that they were going to be healed. God said, pray for the sick. In uh, Mark 16, he says, and these signs shall follow them that believe, not follow the preacher. He said they will follow the people who believe. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. That was, that was all it was. It was those that believe shall lay hands on the sick and they shall cover. Praise God. He's a good God. And we, you know, God is good all the all time. The time. Mm -hmm. Never fails. Praise Jesus. He gave us the Holy Spirit. Luke uh, eleven thirteen. If then... If ye then, being evil, know how to uh, give good gifts, and your children, how much more shall the sh shall your heavenly Father give of the Holy Spirit to them that ask? You want the Holy Spirit? He's talking about when you when you got saved, you got the Holy Spirit. But there's another part of the Holy Spirit that most people reject, and that's the speaking in tongues. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. If you read the book of Acts, you see that it's all the way through. Uh, they would ask people, have you received the Holy Spirit yet? Yeah. No. That's it. your power. The Holy Spirit. Because when you're praying in the tongues, you're praying to God himself. You're not, nobody else is going to intervene. Yeah. You pray, nobody knows what you're praying. Maybe you, maybe you can interpret your own prayers. Some people can. Praise God. Eternal life. John 10, 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall 
any man plucked him out of my hand. Yeah. Praise God, hallelujah. Isn't that good news? Yes, yeah. That nobody can take you out of Christ's hands. Nobody. Jesus said, Father, I, I haven't lost one that you've given me, except the one that was to betray me. Hallelujah. Amen. And he, he, kept, he kept them, every one of them. And praise God, I'm one of them. And so are you if you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. See, that's the whole thing. God so loved the world that he gave, and he hasn't stopped giving today. He's still giving today. He's yeah. giving anybody that asks, whatever they ask. He says, if two or three of you gather together in my name and ask anything, anything, not just some things, he says, anything that you ask, I'll do for you. Amen. In uh, 1 John 5, uh, 5, he says, and this is the confidence that we have. That if we ask anything according to his will, we can have it. What's his will? The word of God. Amen. The Bible. That's his will. He's the only one that has a living will. And he's here to enforce it. Yes. Praise God. Isn't that good news? Yeah, it's great. That's great news to me. <laughs> the spiritual crown. Uh, Revelation 2.10. Fear, uh, fear, fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown. He's going to give me a crown of life. You know, there's a lot of things that the government says that I can't talk about. But I'll tell you something. Abortion is wrong. Amen. It's murder. Amen. Homosexuality yeah. is wrong. Yeah, because the word says so. Yeah. Praise God. And I, they say that if a, a gay couple asks you to marry him and you refuse, you go to jail. I guess I go to jail. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Deuteronomy 8, 18. Be thou, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth, that he may, may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. He, he, he set up the, the tithes and offerings. Back in uh, Exodus, he told Moses, he said, take up the people who are willing, willing to give, take an offering, those that were willing to give. Let me tell you something. Debt is not paying your time. That's what debt is. Doing everything, everything but tithing. Everything but tithing. That's what debt is. And I, I'm a walking example. When I first started paying tithe, they were only a few dollars. But as the years progressed, so did the, so did the tithe. Right. And God blesses you when you pay your tithe. He will bless you. He will take the 90% and stretch it further than the 100% would have ever gone. Believe me, that's it. That is true. Yes. And, and in uh, Malachi, he says, why have you robbed me? And they say, how have we robbed you? You robbed me in your tithes and offerings. Bring your tithes and offerings into my storehouse and see if I do not open up the one for which you, uh, with blessings that you cannot contain. Yes. And he will. Yep. Praise God. This, la this lady I know, uh, well, she's not here, and she's with the Lord now, but her cupboards would get bare. And uh, she would say, 
open the cupboard doors and say, cupboard, fill up, and then walk away. <laughs> and a few days later, the cupboards were full. Where it came from, we just know that God provided the people to bring that, that in. Praise God. Mm -hmm. I, re I used to work piecework. I was a window washer. And I wor worked piecework on uh, new tracks, new homes. And so uh, this one particular, if I got on a good job, I brought home a great paycheck. If I didn't, well, it was pretty bad. <laughs> but anyway, I had, <laughs> uh, this particular week was very, very bad. And so what happened was uh, I called the family together and I says, we got two choices here. We can either take this money and pay our fines or do, I forget what else it was. But everybody says, pay the tithe. So we paid the tithe. Before the night was over, I had to give my neighbors food because so much food started coming in from, from I don't know where, everywhere. And I and God was good and faithful. He, he provided everything that I had need of. Oh, let's see. Romans 6, 23. It says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death. And if you, if you keep on that path, you're going you're gonna to surely die. You may, it may not happen today or tomorrow, but one day we're all going to perish <laughs> but not me because I have eternal life yeah. I, I'm this body may lay down and, and give up the ghost yeah. but I'm not going to die I'm going to be with the Lord singing praises yeah. and worship yeah. Praise the, you want God on the scene if you're, if you're having a problem and you want God on the scene you praise him and keep on praising him until things change. Yes. And I guarantee you, things will change. Amen. Yeah. That's right. yep. But they won't change if you don't do anything. Yep. You have to ask. Mm -hmm. He's a perfect gentleman, and he will, and the Holy Spirit will not interfere in anything you want to do. You have to ask him to help. Praise God. You sang that song. Uh, Oh, I forget the name of it now. We believe. But uh, when you call on the name of the Lord, you, you call on the name of the Lord because He's faithful. He's yeah. the only. You know, uh, when He was standing, when Jesus was standing before Pilate, and Pilate asked him if he was with, and he said, uh, "What? What is true? What is true?" There's only one truth, and that's the word of God. Yeah. Satan told Jesus when he was in the mountain, he says, he says, turn these uh, stones into bread. And Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, mm -hmm. but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Yeah. Every word. They're not just some words. It's every word. He didn't put certain things in, in the uh, word just to fill a space he put it in there for a purpose because it was for a purpose that this book was written Amen. praise God yeah. Romans 8.32 for he, for he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for all up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things he gives us all things everything you know whether you want to realize it or not you know when i get up in the morning i say lord 
thank you for this day and all of your blessings because your blessings are so numerous I can't number them Amen. and they are everything that <coughs> you have or everything that you hope to have is because of the generosity of the Lord Amen. whether you realize it or not Amen. you may say well I had somebody tell me one time well God never done anything for me everything I have I've worked for well, who gave you the strength to get yeah. out there and work? Yeah. Who gave you the job to, that you might be, have a place to work? And then I had somebody say, well, how can you be born again? And I said, well, it's born spiritually. That's how you're born again? Praise God. You know, I, this guy, I was really shocked because this guy's saying the same thing that Nicodemus said to Jesus. How can a man enter his mother's womb again when he's grown? Jesus says, born of the Spirit. Praise God. Uh, praise the Lord. Let me go back over here. <coughs> Love of God. Romans 8, 835. Oh, wait a minute, point there, there a minute. Uh, uh, Ephesians uh, 4, 8. It says, Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, that he led capti captivity captive and gave gifts to men. He gave us gifts, the gifts of eternal life, the gifts of, of the word, using the word. One thing that you got uh, in Hosea, I believe it's Hosea. It says, and in that day, I'm going uh, to bring a famine. He says, not a famine of bre bread and water, but a famine of hearing the word of God. The word of God is, most people don't want to hear it anymore. They, they just don't want to hear it. But God said that we should listen. And he says, my, in another place, he says, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Yes, lack of, he says, because they've rejected knowledge, I will also reject them. Where, wh why do we need the knowledge? We need the knowledge to know who we are in Christ Jesus and what we can and cannot do. There's so many things that we, we can do. I am a child of the living God. That's a gift of God. I am a child of the living God. My father is king. I'm a prince in his eyes. Praise God. How are you? You're princes and princes. Praise God. But you've got to realize that you are who he says you are. You are everything that he said that you are. That's who you are. I'm a king in his sight under him. Under him. Praise God. He's my He's my father. He's my friend. He's everything that I have need of. I don't need anything else except the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all I need. I and with with him, everything else will fall into place. You know, they wrote, had up on the bo uh, board, it says a little thing about 633. That's one of my favorite verses. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. And what are the, all of those things that are going to be added? Well, if you start reading at the, the beginning of uh, Matthew 6, you'll see that it's your clothing, your housing, your food. Everything that you have need of is right there when you seek ye first the kingdom of God. But you got to seek ye first the kingdom of God. You have to seek him. He's not going to force himself upon you or me. We have to ask him to come in. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Now, go to Romans 8. For many years, when uh, Pastor Janie was alive, we'd go someplace, and she'd get up to minister, and she was one heck of a minister. 
You take one word and preach on it for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, she would be up there and she would holler. I'd be sitting in the back of the room and she'd say, Bud! Romans 8.8! 8. So, uh, naturally, I'd have to give her Romans 8.8. 8. Yeah. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot, cannot please God. That's mm -hmm. Romans 8.8. 8. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Well, I want to get over here to 8, 35. Who shall separate them, or us, or me? I like to, I like to put my own, my own little thing in there. Same way when I'm singing songs, I like to put me, me, me. It makes it more personal. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Of Christ shall tribulation? No, there's no way that tribulation is going to separate us. Or distress, or persecution, or famine, nor na uh, nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are as accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors. Amen. We are more than conquerors. Get that down in your spirit, that you're more than a conqueror. You can conquer anything that comes against you with Jesus Christ. Call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. That's all you have to do is call on his name and you'll be saved. More than conquer through him that loves us. For I am persuaded neither death, nor life, nor uh, angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any uh, other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, of, of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You understand that? Nothing, nothing that this world has to offer can separate you from the love of Christ. Nothing. And if you, the gifts, they're all free. The promises, yeah. I forget how many thousand promises are in the Word of God, but there's thousands of them in there. And we need to use the ones that we're supposed to use. You know, we're, uh, my needs, uh, the, there's a scripture that says, uh, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not upon thine own understanding, and all of thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall give thee the desires of your heart. What is the desire of your heart? You know, you, have, you should search, search yourself and find out, what is the desire of your heart? My desire should be what God's desire is. And God's desire is that none should perish, but all come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's his desire for you and for me. Mm -hmm. Praise God. I'm so glad that when I got saved, you know, I got saved by accident. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not quite. What happened was uh, I promised uh, this little Italian, Tony, he used to ask me to come to church with him. And I would say, well, I'm, I'm a Catholic. I, I don't go to other churches. And I always had that excuse. Well, this one morning he asked me, uh, he asked me a few days in advance. He says, uh, how about coming to a men's uh, prayer breakfast with me on Saturday? I said, sure. So when I got up Saturday morning, I was sick, really sick. But I went to the, the meeting anyway. And after I got there, I felt real, I felt good. Had a great breakfast. A few people got up and gave testimonies. 
when somebody gave the word, and then they asked me, could we pray for you? I said, why, well, sure. And they prayed for me, and I left that meeting, and I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew that Jesus Christ was the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Amen. And Amen. nothing was going to stop me from going forth with him. Yeah. Praise God. Just because of this little Italian guy, <laughs> I, I call him the Wop, but I, you know, I'm Italian too, so you can call me the Wop. <laughs> but anyway, <coughs> just because of his persistence, I was saved. And Tony uh, is very, and was so, very persistent. So you have to be persistent. Amen. You know, you ask somebody once, you ask them twice, you, you keep asking them. <coughs> and pretty soon, maybe they're going to get so disgusted. <laughs> and they're going to come, come, and they're going to get saved. Yeah. Yeah. Get you on their back. Isn't that great? That, yeah. You never know what's going to happen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I think it's time to close. And Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank, I thank you for all of your blessings this day. I thank you for your word and, and the power of your word. And Father, as we go our separate ways, I ask that you would bring people into, into each life, Father that they would be a witness unto you, and that you would be, be brought glory and honor unto your name. And Father, I just give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said, Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yeah.